Hi guys, this is PogPod. Um, this was my gym battle with Dragon Claw. And yeah, so I'm gonna be doing the commentary. Um, so from team preview, I noticed he had a Sigalith and some faster Pokemon than mine. Um, so I decided to start the battle with my two usual leads, um, Breloom and Infernape. And he starts the battle with Aerodactyl and Flygon. Um, I usually start the battle using Fake Out and Spore, but I decided to instead use Fake Out on Aerodactyl and save Spore for um, Sigilyph because I don't like Sigilyph. So his Flygon gets the Earthquake off, and my Breloom resists it. My Infernape isn't so lucky, but he also has a Focus Sash, so yeah, I'm able to survive. Um, I find out that his Flygon is faster so with, than his Aerodactyl, so that probably means he has a Choice Scar. But it doesn't matter too much because I get lucky here. Um, I get a critical hit on his Flygon, and he gets knocked out, unfortunately for him. My Toxic Orb activates on my Breloom, and he decides to bring in his Sigilyph, which was the one Pokemon I didn't want to face. Luckily, his Flame Orb hasn't activated yet, so I decide to go for the Spore on him. But before that, his Aerodactyl attacks first and is able to knock out my Infernape, which probably wouldn't have done anything anyway. Um, I find out here that my Breloom goes first, which is good to know for a future reference, and also he wasn't able to use Cosmic Power, so that was good. Um, I get some HP back for my Breloom because of the Poison Heal. And I have to make a decision what to bring out, and I decide to go with Drifblum here. My Drifblum is fully invested in HP, as you can see, 442. And even though that Stone Edge missed, I think I would have survived it anyway. I, I'm able to get the Tailwind off, and I use Seed Bomb on Aerodactyl because I'm starting to find it annoying. Bomb doesn't KO him, and on top of that, his Sigilyph wakes up and uses Cosmic Power. I won't be able to use Spore on him again because his Flame Orb would activate and burn him at the end of the turn. So I have to figure out some way to get rid of him. He resists all of my stab moves. My Drifloom doesn't really have any attacks either, so I decided to do the one, one thing he was meant to do on my team and that's to use Explosion. I go first because I have Tailwind up and it doubles my speed. Um, I'm hoping that this normal gem boosted Explosion would be enough to knock out his Sigilyph. I know it would definitely knock out his Aerodactyl because he has very little HP left. Um, but as you can see, unfortunately, his Sigilyph is pretty bulky and yeah, he survives, which sucks. Um, luckily, I went for the protect to protect myself from the explosion, so his stored power did nothing to me. I still have Tailwind up, so I bring out my Terrakion, and he brings out his Lucario. I go for the Rock Slide because his Siglyph is a real threat right now, but yeah, he managed to survive with very little HP. Luckily, I also decide to attack him using my Breloom, just to be sure. His Sigilyph faints here, and I manage to get the Flinch Hacks on his Lucario. Um, this tells me that he's running his Dream World ability justified. Turns out his Nidoqueen, Queen, which I've never really faced before. Um, I think Lucario is more dangerous, so I decide to attack him first with Mach Punch. I also decide to use Earthquake because they're both weak to it, and my Breloom wouldn't take much damage from it. I knock out his Lucario here, and I was hoping his Nidoqueen Queen would die. But it survived. I really wasn't sure what to expect from Nidoqueen, Queen, so the Earth Power was a little surprise. But... What surprised me even more was that it was able to knock out my Terrakion, um, even if it was super effective. Um, I find out here that 
it wasn't carrying a life orb, so that's, yeah, that's really good, I guess. Um, my Tailwind finally dies here, and so I decide to bring out my Dusclops. And he brings out his last Pokemon, Porygon 2. I know an Ice Beam is coming, so I use Protect on my Breloon, and I go for the Trick Room on my Dusclops so I can start preparing for my last Pokemon, which would be Golurk. Uh, Golurk is probably slower than his Porygon 2 and Nidoqueen, so uh, by setting up Trick Room, I'm ensuring that he'll go first when he comes out. Unfortunately, this means my Breloom is the last Pokemon to move on my team. I go for the Swagger on uh, Porygon 2 because I know it has no attacking moves, and if it did, it would be a weird Porygon 2. Uh, I think I should have gone for the Mach Punch on one of his Pokemon here, but for some reason I didn't, and because of Trick Room, his Porygon 2 goes first and knocks out my Breloom. It's okay because I needed to bring in my Golurk before Trick Room ran out, and I wanted him to come in at full health so he can take at least one hit. So my Golurk is out now, and my Dusclops is actually a good teammate for Golurk because he can set up Trick Room for him, and he can use Swagger on him. And if you're watching this and going, huh, what, what's going on? That's not a mistake. It's because, yes, he's holding a person berry. So now my Golurk is at plus two attack and not confused. My Dusclops also makes a good teammate for Golurk because he can take an earthquake and he can still support him even with a little bit of HP left. Um, so the match is pretty much over now. Uh, his Porygon 2 goes for the Ice Beam. And I'm able to survive that because I brought Golurk in unharmed. So that's pretty much game. Um, very good job to Dragon Claw because even with all of the hacks that was against him, he came really close to defeating me. He brought me down to one Pokemon. So yeah, very good job.